sorry. You can't come in dressed like an idiot. a bunch of comedians hanging out with some friends. You're not supposed to be here, but if you're cool, you can come in. If you've ever been offended by anything, don't come in. I never see Ray enough. We used to share egg creams at the Comedy Cellar, and then he got a big hit TV show, yeah, and I, they started printing money just to hand directly to him. He's part of the whole bailout mess. <laughs> <laughs> but it's his new show that he took another big leap that's fantastic. I yes. took a pay cut. Uh, we're trying. But that's true. We're trying. Gary gave you your first job in writing, didn't he? Gary uh, hired me to write jokes for the Grammys. Yeah. 1990. Yeah. You all remember it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I do remember some of the jokes. Fire away. I remember you had some joke. A, a, a country band came out, uh, and the guy had these crazy sideburns, and you said, I've never seen sideburns like that before, and I'm a Trekkie. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That is one of Judd's jokes. And also, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that was your joke. That was my joke. My joke was, why am I hosting the Grammys? Obviously, I have nothing to do with music, but actually, I do have something to do with music. My uh, girlfriend used to do the guy in Uriah Heep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right out of my journal. <laughs> you had one of the best moments I ever saw on television. Bob Dylan had just accepted the Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. Right, and, and it took forever, and no, he made no sense, and Nicholson presented it to him, and you came out, and after a really long pause, you said, uh, Jack Nicholson and Bob Dylan were just discussing how they should do more television. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what I learned from that. <laughs> you see, uh, certainly when I started, and I think a lot of comics still feel this way, uh, and haven't made the transition, is they think of everybody as an object. So that's an object for a joke because he was on before me. But if you end up then actually meeting the person, <laughs> yes, th there's an apology necessary. <laughs> why doesn't he apologize for babbling like a madman? Paul, I, I also, I was, I was running now titles. why can he talk? Who's I don't a... know. <laughs> he, he shouldn't be able to talk before him. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I That's stuff, true, fair point. I am, <laughs> yeah, point. I'm of the, uh, the younger generation, so, I just wonder for all of you, uh, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> all right, now you can talk. <laughs> it's so good. It's, it, it's so good because it's so mutual. <laughs> <laughs> The truth is, I saw your, your special like just a, a couple weeks ago. I was really into what you were doing, and I said, now, who is this? And then... He thought you were Emo Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Bose, and um, yeah. you kind of had a quick trajectory in a very yeah. short time, and people gave you shit for it without even having seen it. Yeah, the you. biggest reason people gave me shit is uh, since I came on the internet, they said that I didn't uh, get enough criticism. I wasn't in the clubs. Grinding, right. uh, grinding it up. But the truth is, uh, for the older comics that say that, uh, I want them to read 10,000 internet comments and see if they don't feel fully criticized. <laughs> After that, I mean, like, it's the most vitriolic personal. I mean, it's one thing for a heckler to have to heckle you on stage and own that moment, but when people are faceless and don't have to get the repercussions for that, What's they're the worst uh, thing they've said about you? Uh, the first comment I ever got was uh, when I was 15. It was "Go, go, gadget faggot." <laughs> <laughs> That's all it was. Well, all right, wait a second. Wait, that, that seems supportive. I know. <laughs> when I... and, and honestly, I meant it as supportive. <laughs> we were racing to that. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I know, we just cut you right off at the turn. No, no. Sorry, man. Just as well, as long as someone said it. <laughs> so when I first met Bo, I asked him who his favorite comic is, and he said, Hans Tewen. <laughs> exactly, he's a Dutch comedian. <laughs> and when I met you, you were nine? 
<laughs> I can't really talk about it because of the restraining order, but <laughs> I was just blown away that you would even know who he was. Wait, what's his name? Hans Taylor. Can you do a little bit of this thing? Uh, he's a Dutch absurdist. Uh, one of the things he does is uh, he brings out a, a sock puppet, which is a black sock. See, already I don't like him. Yeah, no. <laughs> all right, all right, it's a, it's a white sock. Oh, and then uh, <laughs> he, uh, uh, and, uh, he just sings a song and feeds the sock uh, a baby Ruth and just crunches right. in the baby Ruth the entire time. It's insane. Well, I wonder, it just seems like there's, the really only rules about stand-up comedy is that you have to stand up on stage and you have to be funny. And there seems to be all these invisible rules that people put up, like, you know, starting with your second best joke, ending with your best joke. Who told you this? Yeah, where? I don't, yeah. I don't know. I, t I took a comedy class. No, oh. I didn't. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Oh. When I was 19 at the University of Arizona, I'd never been in a comedy club in my life. And uh, I saw that George Carlin was appearing at a club in Phoenix, and I took my material naively. Uh, up to see if he would look at it, because I sat down and wrote some material that I thought was right for Carlin. And he was standing by the bar, and I asked him if he would read the material. And he said, well, I write my own stuff, but I'll look at it. And he said, come back tomorrow night. And the next night I drove back. He, as it turned out, took me into his dressing room and had read everything and said, man, uh, you know, I think you're really funny. I think you're very green, but there's something funny on each page, because I think what he sensed is the essence of something funny. Yeah. And then that can be developed. Because at the core, your, your essence is funny, then you just attach it to your personality, which clearly should be checked. <laughs> hey, Gary, I got a couple of jokes that I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, uh, my Carlin conversations were never really quite that. He would just call me on the phone. I'd go, hello, and he'd go, why don't men like to sleep with their women in the mornings? I'd go, I don't know, and he'd go, do you ever try and open a grilled cheese sandwich? <laughs> Click. That was... Uh... <laughs> so he was using my uh, stuff. Apparently. <laughs> like, did you ever have a moment where you were like, that guy's amazing, I'm gonna go up to him and talk to him? Well, the first comedy album I heard was Bill Cosby. Somebody gave me to Bill Cosby, I'm to Russell, my brother, whom I slept with. It was my first hearing anyone do stand-up, really, and it was just so natural and so... And, and he's the one who, who turned me on to it, you know? I don't say I emulated him, but, but that style, that conversational style was, was just appealing to me. He was funny last night. He was night. on Letterman yeah. last night. He was hilarious, yeah. wasn't he? No, I was... I, I just... The fear is, as you get older, you don't hold up anymore. Right. And it was great, you know, he's 73 years old, and I was laughing just like I was yeah. when he was young, yeah. Did you picture your career this way when you started out? Is it like what you wanted? Not here. <laughs> no, <I don't> know. <laughs> you know, my goal was to do stand-up. I just loved doing stand-up. I was making a living doing stand-up. I did the Tonight Show with Johnny. I did the HBO. I did the Young Comedian Special with this guy 17 years ago. And it was the Young Comedian Special, and I was kind of old then. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah. I noticed that. I was like 35. I, I, uh, yeah. I remember the time just thinking, Ray is so much better <laughs> than all of us. Uh, I remember seeing your stand-up and thinking, that guy's going to be a great writer. <laughs> 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 I watched outtakes from Raymond on YouTube, and every take you did a different punchline, and each one was funnier than the next. Well, before we would tape the show, I would sit down with a couple, one or two writers, and go, let's see if there are any second takes to do that kind of stuff. But we still, I still thought of them. Yeah. I just... <laughs> <laughs> he gave himself more of a compliment, because that, that's the preparation, that then allows him to get even freer after he does all that right, stuff. Right, right. That's the Zen Buddhism in you. Yeah. You've been on a real introspective journey, haven't you? Uh, till now, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, because Mark and I, we've talked about this on his podcast, WTF podcast, it's the best. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I highly recommend doing it. So we get really personal. And um, we had a conversation where we were talking about how introspective we got and how it screwed with us. And Is that the same as self-obsessive? Uh, in your case, absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, how do you make the shift? Introspective sounds like actually noble. Do you know well, yourself obsessive? Yes. And then you're introspective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a, there's a difference, though. You can still be introspective and not show any of that on stage directly. Oh. Like, I don't talk about life. I mean, uh, you're so clearly, if I may, this is a compliment. You are so clearly a very unique fellow that it's clear that just by being yourself, that stuff comes out of you. 
It doesn't mean that you have to talk about yourself necessarily. Right. No, no, no. Right, right, right. Yeah. Just play along. Just play along. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you've been uh, on, on a, an internal journey, a spiritual journey. Would you call it a spiritual journey? Yeah, it's, 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 it's pronounced spiritual. It's, Thanks. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I've been meditating far too, far too long to be uh, uh, happy about anything. The, um, well, I'm at peace, and, um, but um, I don't, really don't know what I want to say about this. Well, Gary brought a, one of his uh, monk friends, a very serious monk, to the set of Knocked Up one yeah. day. <laughs> and I was, you know, a little nervous. And what it turned out we were shooting was an, a, a woman wearing a prosthetic vagina and the head would just come in and out, in and out, for that scene in the movie. And so we have Gary and the monk at the monitor, and I'm just going like, okay, head out of vagina. Head in vagina. And the monk, and the monk, the monk is in his robe, yes. with a shaved head, with headphones on. Yes. And there's really nothing to hear except him yelling, <laughs> that's too far out. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, the beauty of it was, is I was watching him, and he would <laughs> smile. Yeah. Uh, because he felt what was happening was funny. So in the movie Knocked Up, yes. a head was coming in and out of a vagina? Well, in the movie, it just came out. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> but you see, Ray, when you shoot a movie... You thought it was like an indecisive baby? <laughs> <laughs> But we forgot, the, the key to it is, uh -huh. this monk, is that he has seven fingers. Yeah. And, uh, in total? In total. And, and so he comes to, the, to our hotel room, and my wife instantly just said, what happened to your fingers? Yeah. Which usually you would wait a minute to ask somebody. <laughs> and so now my children are there, and I'm thinking, well, this is a great moment, because he'll teach them about Buddhism, and this will change their lives. Yeah. And so he said, well, uh, in order to really practice and teach, I uh, burn them off. I, I, I covered them with cloth, and I lit them on fire, and I meditated <laughs> as a way of testing myself to be strong so I could teach other people. And your kids are... And my kids are like, holy <laughs> shit, you know? <laughs> and then I, I hung out with the monk all day, and then I came back, and, and I said to my wife, and what do you think of the monk? Hoping, like, in addition to the finger thing, she had a, a spiritual moment. And, and she just said, that guy's fucking nuts. <laughs> uh, uh, you, are, you, are you that dedicated? Uh, if I if I didn't bowl, I would I would burn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh... Stand-up comedy and comedy seems so inherently Western. So like to understand Eastern, oh. uh, and then that might be me being no, soon. But I like how does that affect your perspective on comedy? Because I don't. I yeah, don't lay like down some wisdom, Eastern. man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh, yes. That is the correct question. The answer to that <laughs> takes a tad of time. <laughs> I think the Eastern philosophy uh, really uh, encourages authenticity, authenticity, and nothing but authenticity. What I saw when I saw you on stage is I didn't see a fake moment. But here's where it gets difficult to explain or understand, is that Bo actually, when he performs, is, uh, there's a lot of ironic detachment there. There's a lot of, you know, you're not, you're not really revealing anything yourself. So I, not... I never talk about what I really okay. think about on stage directly, because I just don't think, I don't value what I think at this point about those issues. Well, just really, like, I don't, I don't think anyone wants to get up and hear a 20-year-old, like, tell them what they think you, about how you the world works. Would you do me a favor? So I just kind of make jokes. Would you do me a favor? Would you do Art is Dead? Yeah. Because I think that song says everything that I think I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that one. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh, he's a, he's a prop comic. <laughs> <laughs> Like to seem complicated, but we're 
they're not complicated I can explain it pretty easily Have you ever been to a birthday party for children? One of the children won't stop screaming Cause he's just a little attention attractor When he grows up to be a comic or actor He'll be rewarded for never maturing For never understanding or learning Every day can't be about him There's other people, you selfish asshole it must be psychotic, it must be demented To think that I'm worthy of all this attention Of all of this money you worked really hard for I slept in late while you worked at the drugstore My drug's attention, I am an addict But I get paid to indulge in my habit It's all an illusion I'm wearing makeup, I'm wearing makeup, makeup, makeup <laughs> Art is dead so people think you're funny How do we get those people's money? Said an artist here We're rolling in dough while Carlin rolls in his grave The show has got a budget The show has got a budget All the poor people, way more deserving of the money Won't budget Cause we wanted our name and lights when we could have fed a family of four for 40 fucking fortnights, 40 fucking fortnights. I'm an artist, please God forgive me, I am an artist, please don't revere me, I am an artist, please don't respect me, I am an artist, feel free to correct me. Self-centered artist, self-obsessed artist, I am an artist, I am an artist, but I'm just a kid, I'm just a kid, I'm just a kid. Maybe I'll grow out of it. Thank you, man. I think that's kind of interesting from a, a, a comic his yeah, age. I, I thought it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to watch someone that funny, that young, when you think of how unfunny you were at 20 years old. That's, all I did at 20 is worry about my hair, I think. Yeah, that's a dead end. <laughs> As all you guys, as you got more successful, did you, did you feel like you got better or did you get more insecure? I'm out of this one, right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're, you're out of it, but, but, but pay attention. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think if I think of when I was the happiest, and I'm not complaining, I love what I'm doing and all that, but I think when I was doing stand-up, when I was going to the cellar and hanging out with you guys and my twins were two years old and it was crazy, I, I think of that, and I was still kind of screwed up then, but I think I was the happiest then. But I'm happy now, too. I'm not saying I'm not happy now. I'm saying I love the right. show, I love what I'm doing, I love getting the... Ray is happy. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's just be clear about this that. Is happy. This is me happy. Ray yeah. is happy, so yeah. that, don't leave thinking he's not fucking happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, there's another layer to this. I just have a little uh, piece I pulled out of the uh, documentary. You did a documentary with Tom Caltabiano. During one of the hiatus on Raymond, we went on a stand-up tour, and he said, I'm going to film it. And that was, it became this thing. Yeah, it was against my will, almost. It's called 95 Miles to Go. And um, there's some really, really interesting stuff in here that... Put on the guy, put on the homeless guy with the good voice. <laughs> <laughs> Adulation? Yes. There's a part of me inside that thinks and that doesn't buy it at all. Like, like there's something in me that thinks any split second they could turn on me and say, oh, you're really a dick. Yeah, we don't like it. You know what I mean? You're yeah, like the pros, the golf pros would be my friend. I, 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 of course, because yeah. it, 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 it's artificial anyway. Right, right, right. Maybe, maybe, but I mean, even... No, but it's, I mean, I'm saying I don't even buy the artificial part. I don't even buy that they like me as a star because I guess it's because inside I know I'm not quite what they think I am. It's a, it's a weird feeling of even when they're cheering, there's a little part of you that still feels like you're an imposter. Does that ever go away? Not according to... Anybody I've talked to. Yeah. <laughs> but did you think when your show ended yeah. that uh, it was just such a monster success, one of the greatest shows ever in television, yeah. nine years, it never got weaker, that 
it would fill your ego so you would feel great for 20 years and then it just didn't happen? I, I, I believe that like for like a week. Like, <laughs> like this is enough. All right, my father never hugged me, but this is fucking enough. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> he hugged me once, my father, and it was, I was about 20, and it felt very awkward. And I know now what made it awkward, uh, the nudity. <laughs> 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 My mom would tuck me in and say, uh, fuck me, honey. <laughs> Did your father hug you and then in your ear say, I don't want to live anymore? <laughs> you know, I could never make out what he was saying, but it sounded like that. <laughs> I was at a bat mitzvah of my brother's kid's bat mitzvah. It was my job to buffer my father from the world. <laughs> All right? And I go, I go to pick him up, thinking we're going to my brother's house to see the kids. I say, you ready to go? He goes, where are we going? I said, well, I, we're going to see Craig's kids. And he goes, what for? <laughs> and I said, because they're your grandchildren? He goes, you know, some people get something out of that. I didn't get anything out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that, I mean, is that consistent with how you grew up with him? And what, that he's a, a pathologically selfish, narcissistic, bipolar freak? Yeah. Is that well, what you're okay. asking me, or am I reading into it? Oh, I'm asking you <laughs> is, did you learn anything about you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did you learn about you? I learned yes. that I never want to be that. That I have to fight the wiring. Wow. What? <laughs> what? I, I don't think it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> Now we get along fine. He writes me uh, emails in all caps. <laughs> emails in all caps. <laughs> I want to hear about your journey. I want to know if you've, if you've attained anything through your study of Buddhism. I, I don't know if attained is the right word. So uh, with the whole thing's a mess. I mean, uh, you get closer to just being. What exactly does that mean? So translate it into comedy, what it means. Oh my God. Translate I mean, like, it for, into comedy? As a comic, as a comic I will. how do you? How I will. Do you... It's closest to where he's starting, which is, I'm not really trying to be anything right now. I'm sitting down, I'm gonna, this is what I do. Do you think Bo's just healthy? I think Bo's really healthy, yeah. And, and he can be as funny as us fucked up. <laughs> Are you damaged? No, I, t I always, come on, you gotta be. No, no, I, I, I... You wanna be? Yeah, let's I know. <laughs> Well, the really fucked up part was, the little time I spent in clubs, I would find myself jealous of the problems that our comics had, because I felt like I wasn't legitimate, because anything that I've achieved, I've achieved in light of nothing. Like, I've had people patting me on the back since day one. I, I think I get oh, like... Oh, that's horrible. I know, <laughs> that's true. There's a thing in Gary's DVD where he's talking to Jerry Seinfeld, and he was saying, Gary, you know, it's not all about pain. You don't have to be in pain to be funny. Isn't it about talent? Can't you just be born with like a God-given gift and you're just a talented person and you can communicate and it's all, it's all about that? I said, I hear rage. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> well, I, I just think the, the, the absolute uh, comedy comes from pain, I think kind of limits what comedy is, because I think comedy comes from love, it comes yes. from like fear, it comes from hate. Right. You're gonna tell me you're not fucking angry? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I mean, come on, I saw that song, I see how no, you look, no, no. I know what you went through. No, no, <laughs> uh, total, total anger, but uh, to say that it's... Uh, you're angry at I, Justin I, I, Bieber, I, I, aren't you? But I, I'm arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from everything. It comes from everything is what you're saying. But the anger there, I don't think that's damage that I need to fix. I'm, I'm just like stuck up enough to think that they're wrong. We've just focused on anger here and all that stuff yeah, and yeah. the problems with the parents. But, but th there will be other uh, elements that include love and everything else you've mentioned that as you sort those out, they will continue to give be fodder for your next song. Right. That's all. It's whatever you're Yeah, yeah, out. yeah. Just that absolute comedy. But someone who isn't pain, sorting out those, that stuff within right now, them. Right now. Are we meeting here again next week? Yes. <laughs> 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 I, it's helping me tremendously. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 uh, all all my journey is is to be authentically who I am, not trying to be somebody else under all circumstances. Have you and, found confusion? And it takes a, sure, there isn't. The whole world is confused because they're trying to be somebody else. 
to be your true self, it, it takes enormous work. Then we could start to look at the problems in the world. But instead, ego drives it. Ego drives the world. Ego drives the problems. So you have to work in an egoless way. This egolessness, which um, is the key to being authentic, is a, a battle. And it's a battle that has to be won uh, before we're worried about the economy. I, I think that it, for a comic, it's a dangerous battle. So, yeah, no I'm curious. Do you think, do you think being a comic sort of like stunts our growth in that direction? Uh, I, I would say that I struggle to not have that happen. That's my struggle. Um, yeah, but why did the but, birds fall out of the sky? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I don't think really a lot of them are that good at flying. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, you know, Everybody takes it for granted. There's a bird. We're talking about how hard it is to be a comic, and we know they're all different. All of a sudden, 500 birds fell. Uh, how many guys haven't made it through the improv? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that I will get a little bit of an understanding of what your journey towards enlightenment has been like. I want to understand why. This is not a safe environment to do it. What would be a safe environment? Well, you just I'm keep not, asking me about it. it. But I feel that you're very close to the vest about about your experience, and I'm genuinely... We need something in our society that says there's some importance to heart and authenticity, not just money, power, and how are we gonna control the world? I love you, Gary Shandling! <laughs> Bo Burnham! <laughs> Judd Apatow! Ray Romano! Gary Shandling! Mark Marin, come on back, hang out at the Green Room. <laughs>